Point. I'm Ken Rosado. Today we bring you a company called ZSpace that has Long Island students learning in virtual reality environments that are in the classroom. We also bring you Back in the Game, an after-school program that's helping children and adolescents to recover from serious illnesses. But first, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Americans suffer 1.5 million heart attacks and strokes each year, making cardiovascular disease, including heart disease and stroke, the leading cause of death in the United States. Well, a new book out suggests that a supplement, vitamin K2, might actually be the key to good health. Please join me in welcoming the author, Dr. Dennis Goodman, a cardiologist and director of the Integrative Medicine Department at NYU Langone Medical Center, and his patient, Karen De Guano, who is diagnosed with hereditary high cholesterol in her early 40s, and just a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh, yes, just a couple of years ago. Good to have you both here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, well, first of all, who is most at risk for stroke, doctor? So the risk factors for stroke are actually very similar to the risk factors for uh, heart attacks. And the number one risk factor for stroke is high blood pressure. So it's very, very important people know what their blood pressure is and you get it under control. But there are multiple others, smoking, high cholesterol, diabetes, stress, inactivity. So these are, these are the big risk factors for stroke. And that's why I want to give you one statistic that I always mm -hmm. throw out. 50% of people who have a heart attack and die from it, it's their first and last symptom. And what that tells you, Ken, is that you can't wait until you have symptoms to go see the doctor. Go before, be proactive. Find out what your risk factors are, and when you do something about it, you can actually save your life. 80% of strokes and heart attacks are preventable. Give me some of those symptoms. So for a stroke, for example, there's a word called FAST. Think of the word FAST when you see anybody where you think maybe they're having a stroke. F is for face. If you see any asymmetry on the face, they've got a droop, something like that, that's the F. A is for arm. Ask them to raise their arm, both sides. If they can't raise it, that's the A. The R, I mean the S, is for speech. Just ask them to say, where's the dog? The sky is blue, they can't speak properly. You know, if any of those are, are, are abnormal, call 911. The last for T is time. If you get to the hospital within three hours, as you know, we discussed, mm -hmm. you can save somebody's life and you certainly can make sure that they don't have serious brain damage. So yeah. that's, that's the story. A, a stroke is really a heart attack of the brain. Mm -hmm. This and happened in my family and my <coughs> partner, Laurie Stokes, uh, Stokes' family. This happened. So we're firsthand knowledge. And in both our cases, right. uh, our, both our mothers got to the hospital and got quick treatment, and they're pretty much okay and prevention today. is the key to so yeah. much of this. And Karen, now, what was your story? Tell, uh, tell us what happened. Uh, well, uh, I come from a family of... Uh, high cholesterol. I lost both my father and my mother to heart disease. In fact, my father had a heart attack in his 40s, my mother in her 50s, so at onset age was early. Uh, my sister, my older sister, had a heart attack in her early 60s, uh, and I was always diagnosed with having high cholesterol. And I had always been advised to go on statins, and I didn't, I, I hadn't. Uh, I. I would kind of shied away from that. Just to clarify, statin's a type of drug to keep your cholesterol down. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then in mid-2000s, approximately 2006, 2007, I let my primary care physician uh, took me into statins, mm -hmm. and he put me on a very high dose uh, of statin. Uh, he said that's what I needed. I stayed on that uh, for several years, actually, to 2013. Uh, at which time I, I was retired and I was taking my lifestyle into my hands and I really had the time to eat well, to exercise, to take the right supplements and I decided to try to manage my heart disease with my lifestyle. And what happened? I, I went back to the doctor and I said, I'd like to get off these statins. He said, no, absolutely, you can't. Uh, I refuse to allow you to. So I, I wouldn't see him. I, I just didn't see a doctor for over a year. I finally went back January of this year, 2015, had my blood work done, and my LDL was very high. It was almost 200. The LDL, and my which total cholesterol, was around cholesterol. over right. 300. The low-density lipoprotein, right, which is the, the cholesterol, bad. which is yes. bad for you as right. opposed yes. to the HDL. Yes. And again, he said, you need statins. And at that time, I had said, uh, I'd like to try to have a coronary calcium scan. I said, I had had one when I was 51. And my score was zero. I said, I'd like to have that again before I go back on statins. I said, because I know it's not a one-on-one -on -one correlation right. between LDL and calcification. And if I don't have calcification, what's the point of being on statins and going through 
the hell I was in I was feeling very very badly on statins muscle fatigue uh, depression mental and that's fog. not totally uncommon doctor right, right. To, to feel that so, so that's one of the issues you know people need statins sometimes right and sometimes they can't tolerate them and we call that statin intolerance and people can get terrible side effects Karen can tell you muscle aches joint aches sometimes it even affects cognitive functions memory although that's very controversial I've certainly seen it in some patients Karen's one of those people mm -hmm. so she came to me she actually got another calcium scan and her score was very high so now she's after 10 years <laughs> with a lot of plaque and so she's already got you know blockages starting there and so it's important that she try to stay on a statin so what I do and this is a big part of my practice when people can't tolerate a statin we need to be thinking about ways that you can help them to deal with it so some of the things that we do number one is are you sure it's the statin causing the muscle cramps you don't want to just assume that it's that so a lot of times I'll take them off and then put them back on again to see whether the symptoms disappear and come back I always check things like a vitamin D level mm -hmm. check your thyroid see what other drug classes you may be taking because there's certain things like calcium channel blockers for high blood pressure fibrates certain drug classes actually can exacerbate the statin and then what I try to do is actually cut the dose back to the minimum amount and see if they can tolerate it so Karen was on a high dose of a statin I've cut her down to a very low dose taking it every other day and then we had a conversation about supplements that may help her sure so that's a big part of uh, I think the management trying to get people on things that may help them so and is this where the K2 comes and in? this is where K2 you know it's very interesting and I didn't know about K2 until recently myself and then when I started to do the research I got really really actually amazed at the evidence out there that is suggesting that vitamin K2 keeps calcium in the bones ah there's the key and it doesn't allow it to build up in the arteries and there was actually a recent study it's just coming out that maybe statins actually reduce the vitamin k2 levels in the body and there was a recent study showed that when you're on statin you can actually get increased calcification of the arteries wouldn't it be interesting we find out that there's depletion of k2 from statins and maybe by taking this vitamin k2 you can actually prevent calcification so because just, calcification actually is just the beginning of getting so blockages. i follow just so i follow in english yes. so the k2 keeps the calcium in the bones because if there's if the calcium leaches from the bones it then attaches to the arteries and then could break off the arteries could cause heart attacks and strokes right and it I may not necessarily properly? break right. up but it certainly can cause blockages and put you at risk from heart attacks and gotcha. strokes. so that's one of the things that I think is really important and Karen's on vitamin K2 now to try to help prevent some of this calcification and then other supplements like magnesium krill oil coq10 now let's just talk about coq10 because people think take coq10 when you've got statin intolerance the literature hasn't been good on it but I've seen patients who definitely benefit it's worth a try all right well listen there's so much more that we could talk we could do we could do an hour on this and I'm sure there's still more research to come but the bottom line is if you have problems taking statins talk to another doctor get a second opinion because don't just drop the statins but there is a possible but solution look for out an integrative there integrative cardiologist absolutely the average cardiologist is not going to want to talk to you about <laughs> supplements I'll tell you that now well Karen and dr. Goodman thank you thank so you much too. continue good health to thank you. you so much and thank you again for being thank on you. Thank thank today. You. much appreciated and we're coming right back with a company called Z space and what they're doing for stem education stay with us